Hey guys, welcome to the first part of the JSON Server series. In this first video, we're going to talk about what JSON Server is, as well as how to install and run it. So let's get started. So what exactly is JSON Server and what does it do for us as web developers? Well, JSON Server is an NPM package that allows us to create a fake REST API with practically no coding. It is extremely useful to front-end developers for testing and prototyping their apps. So to put this in simpler terms, if you're working on something on the front end, we often need to interact with data, which comes from the back end. Now, this would mean we would actually have to set up some kind of back end ourselves. So we would need to, first of all, know some backend technologies, and we would also need to spend some time doing this, which, as you can imagine, is quite a hassle, and this is exactly what JSON Server was designed to solve. So it's designed to make it as easy for us as possible to test our front-end apps without having to worry about the backend. So now that we have a bit of an idea what JSON Server is all about, let me give you a few online resources that you can use as reference when working with JSON Server. So if you go to the NPM official website and search for the JSON Server package, you'll be able to find some interesting information here um, and statistics about it. So for example, um, at the time of this recording, we can see that it gets um, about 174 and a half thousand downloads per week. And this is of course by web developers all over the world. And if we go to the homepage here, it'll take us to a GitHub page that has the documentation for JSON server. So this is going to be your number one go to resource if you want to um, look up any kind of specific information, or get a little bit deeper into JSON server. Now, we're of course not going to cover every little think here, but we are going to go over the most important and the most commonly used features of JSON server. But definitely feel free um, whenever you have time to take a look at the docs. And now let's go ahead and get started with uh, how to install JSON server. All right, guys, so let's get started here with um, our installation of JSON server. Now I'm going to take you through the steps from the very beginning, from um, all the way from starting up our new project. So we're going to start a brand new project here. I called mine uh, my project. You can name it whatever you like. So let's go in here. And as you can see, it's currently just an empty folder. I'm going to go ahead and access my uh, code editor from here. And I'll be using Visual Studio Code. Okay, so in case you're not too familiar with VS Code, uh, or perhaps you are, and this is this might just be a useful review for you, um, we need to know uh, how to do a few things here. So first of all, we need to know how to access our terminal. So one way to do this is by clicking up here, terminal, and then new terminal, and it's going to open up here. Okay, and another way to do the same thing is by using a shortcut. As you can see here, it tells us to use control plus tilde. So I'll go ahead and do that, and we get the same thing. Okay, now let me just clear this. So um, I'm using uh, git bash for my terminal, which is not the default terminal, but it really doesn't matter. You can use um, the default one as well. Now, before we get started with our JSON server, we do have to make sure we have NPM installed. Um, and to do that, we need to install Node.js. So if you don't have that yet, you can just go to this website here, nodejs.org, and click on this link here and just run the installation. And when, when you're done with that, you can go back to your VS Code, and we can check to make sure we have uh, node install by typing node-v 
and it should give us a version number so mine happens to be this one here and uh, if you want we can also check we have npm which we should but just in case we can type in npm-v and we'll get a version number for that as well okay so now we're good to go so let's clear this again let me actually increase the font size here a bit more so you can see better all right so step number one for us is going to be creating um, a file called package.json and this is something that we do um, that we, we often start with when we're working on some kind of a front-end project it helps us to keep track of any dependencies in our project all right now you could also install the json server globally so if you want to do that you could just go npm install json server and add a global flag so dash g and you can do it that way um, and then you can run it through uh, through a command but we're going to do it a bit differently here we're going to install it locally which is why we're going to be using the um, package.json file okay so let's go ahead and, and do this we're going to say npm init dash y okay and that just created our package.json so if we click on this file we're going to see some information here this is just some basic information about our project um, so the name of the project the version description which has nothing here we don't have to worry about this too much um, but we are going to see something new added here at the bottom once we install our json server so it's going to be added as a dependency so keep an eye on this area here and in our terminal let's type well let's clear it first and let's type in npm install json server and that's it enter and this is going to install our JSON server for us and add it as a dependency right here in our package.json. Okay, so there you go. Here it is. And you will see that um, the current version for me is 0.17.0. .0. For you, it might be different depending on when you're watching the video. Now, you'll also notice that this installation created uh, two more files for us here so we have a node modules folder and we have a package log.json don't worry about these we're not actually even going to have to look inside them uh, just kind of let them be um, so that's it for the installation and in the next step we're going to be adding our mock data okay so let's go to the next step Okay, so to add our mock data, we're going to have to create a new file in our uh, project directory. So let's um, let's call it db.json. Okay, and this is the file that JSON server is going to look for um, for for the data. Okay, so this is where we're going to enter our data. The data has to be in JSON format. Now, if you haven't heard of JSON format before, this is a very popular format that we use um, in, in web development quite a bit especially for things like apis all right so i'm going to show you what it looks like uh, let's just minimize this and i have my data prepared here so i'm just going to copy that and paste it okay so let's look at what we have here first of all um, all our data is enclosed in these curly brackets and then inside we have first of all students here and then we have a bunch of data here so you can see I have four students now this students here this is the name we give to our data and uh, we refer to this as a resource okay so JSON server is going to look at this as a resource for our data and after that we open up our square brackets which indicate an array and inside those square brackets we enter our 
objects. So this is, each student is basically an object, right? With a property and a value or a key and a value. So I gave each student the property of ID, uh, name, email, YOB, which is a year of birth, and a major. So that's what uh, data looks like in JSON format. Now you could have as many of these resources here as you like. Um, I will show, show this to you a little bit later when we run our JSON server. But basically your data is going to look very similar to this. So now let's go ahead and run our JSON server. So to actually run or start up our JSON server, we're going to have to create a script in our package.json, okay? So um, we can see here we have a property called scripts, and this one, this first script here comes um, by default. So we're going to just add to it. Let's just leave it there. And we're going to give our script a name first of all. So you can name it whatever you like. Um, I'm going to call it JSON just to keep it short. And in here, I'm going to write the, uh, the command that we want npm to run to launch our JSON server. So the command is going to be JSON server dash dash watch and then the name of our file that contains our mock data. Okay, so db.json that we created right here. So let's save this. And now we're going to go back to our terminal and we're just going to run this command. Okay, so let me clear it. And we're going to say npm run and then the name that we gave to our script, which is JSON. And there we go. Our JSON server has now launched and it is successfully serving our students' data. So let's take a look at our data by uh, either copying and pasting this into our browser or a quicker way to do it is just holding the control key and clicking right on the link. And we can see that all our student information is displayed right here. So there we go. We're successfully retrieving or seeing our data here, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, I was going to show you how to add another resource to the JSON server. So as I mentioned, right now we only have the student's resource. So let's just exit this for a second. So let's say I want to add another resource here. So I'm going to add a resource called professors, just as an example. So we're going to follow the exact same format. We're going to uh, open our uh, quotes and we're going to say professors. Okay, colon, and then open our square brackets. And inside that, we're going to start entering uh, the information about our professors. So I'm going to give our professor an ID as well. And it's going to be one also. Now, don't worry, uh, the IDs can repeat themselves as long as they're in different resources, right? So uh, they're not going to conflict with each other. Uh, let's give our professor a name. Let's name him Daniel Kowalski. Let's give him an email. And let's also give him, let's say, a subject that he teaches. So he's going to be teaching physics. All right, so there we go. We added uh, one item of data here to our professor's resource. So let's save it. So let's go back to our terminal now. And we're going to see that JSON server has already picked up our second resource, which is professors. So let's click on that. And we're going to see our professor information here. OK, so there we go. We have our students here and we have our professor. And of course, we can access everything just through the browser, which is by, let's say, if I type professors here, I'll see my professor. 
and if you just remove everything and you just go to the localhost 3000 you're gonna see here a little uh, kind of a home page from JSON server which has a summary of all the resources that we have available to us and also how to work with them using these different HTTP methods this is actually going to be our topic for the second video in the series all right so there we go that is how we launch our JSON server and serve data so congratulations on getting to this point and now feel free to move on to the uh, second part of the series which is all about how to work with JSON server